Okay, today we're going to make some biochar in a double retort kiln made from two steel barrels. This one is a 16 gallon or quarter barrel, which I'm using because I can't find a 33 gallon or a uh, half barrel. They're hard to find these days. And that'll be put inside of a 55 gallon, this one with steel roofing wrapped around it with about a two inch gap to uh, insulate it. I used to have mineral wool in, inside of there, but it made, it made it so hot that the steel couldn't handle that and the drum wouldn't last very long. And I find that this is working pretty good. Uh, other than that, I've got nine of these triangular holes. They look to be about two and a half to three inches on a side. I've got nine of those cut all the way around the bottom. And on the top, I've got five of these diamond-shaped holes, which let air in oxygen to help all the gases uh, burn off while they're going up the, uh, the stack. I've got five of those, and they're about six inches wide and two inches tall. And for stock, you can use anything that's dry. Uh, you don't want to have it too big or too small. If it's too big, it won't, uh, the heat won't penetrate all the way through the wood. If it's too small, it'll compact too tight and then you won't, the gases will have a hard time uh, escaping because there's not enough uh, voids. So uh, this is the mix of what's going in to become the, the char as well as what's going to be uh, cooking it from the outside. I'm going to put the slightly bigger stuff, about this size is right for making, for making char. Small is good if, you're, if you've got another situation like the micro uh, retort that uh, is in the other video of the uh, ammo box inside of the, uh, the stove. Anyway, load all this. This is the top of a fence board and it's a little big for what we're going to do, but I'm going to throw it in there as an experiment and we'll take a look at it, at it when it comes out. Okay, so you can see it's full. I have some palm fronds in there, some redwood needles, twigs, pieces from my table saw, a bunch of junk. What I like to do is put this uh, half inch mesh on top of it to, to kind of hold it in there so it doesn't spill out so much when I put it in uh, the other barrel. We'll just slide it in upside down. I'll show you a little secret. I put a little, <laughs> I put a little, uh, some, some wood chips on the ground because they'll get charred too. Every little bit of char helps. Okay, so you look down in here now, you see what you got. This drum is upside down inside of the 55 gallon drum. What's going to happen is these, this wood in here is going to heat up and the gases will escape in that seam between the bottom of this drum and the bottom of the bigger drum and those gases will ignite. So now I'm going to uh, fill that gap with wood. And so I've got a mixture of stuff here. I'm going to put the biggest stuff on the bottom. That's going to burn a little longer, and so when those gases are escaping, the bigger stuff on the bottom will hold a flame a little longer and help those gases to ignite. So this is parts of a pallet. Just sprinkle that in around the bottom, the bigger stuff. Not good for that. Now, that was all pretty small, kindling style. I don't want to pack it in either. It's too tight. 
looks like the stuff inside doesn't need to be packed. Just let it shoot. Okay, so it's all packed with wood, and in order to light it, what I like to do is put some redwood needles on top. So wherever you live, you must have something that's going to light easy. So this is, uh, even though it's a double retort, it's still a T-LUD, which is top-loading updraft. The, uh, the draft that's going to feed oxygen to the flame is coming from the bottom. So what I like to do is put three spaces in here so I can get the lighter. Okay, so I got three little fires going. And that's ready to put the lid on. As soon as I put that on, the heat goes up to the stack and that starts drawing the air in from the bottom and everything was gonna take off. You can see there's a little bit of smoke that'll turn clear pretty soon. Okay, so we're burning the, the jar and you can see it's a clean burn. In here it's snap, crackle, and pop. In the meantime, I wanted to show you this is a regular tea lud Slots in the bottom and I bent those to open them up a little bit more to help more air come in. No holes in the side and it just gets the same lid. The uh, lid with the, I have uh, five feet of eight inch pipe and I just screwed that pipe onto the lid with bailing wire as you see and that uh, I never connected I never connected that pipe but it turned out to be a good thing uh, through the seam there uh, it, it sucks air in and helps the burn be totally complete by the time it comes out the top so this T-LUD system is another way of making biochar, but I found that for the most part, uh, people like to use blowers on it to make sure enough air is getting in to make it a clean burn. Otherwise it can get real smoky. And I don't like the smoke. Okay, we're a half hour into the burn now. You can hear a nice clean sound of the roaring flame, which is mostly the gases escaping. If you can see down in the hole, the gases escaping from the inner barrel are burning all the way around, baking it and driving out more gases. And the emissions are practically nothing. Okay, so it's been uh, about 50 minutes. 50, five, zero, and uh, there's no more, no longer any sound of the gases igniting. I can look down in there and see there's no more flame. A little bit of smoke coming out from the uh, from the charcoal that's in the bottom. So it's all done. Welder's gloves. And I'm going to quench what is the coals that are in there. You can wear a particle mask when you do this. Because those coals will become char. Carefully take out the inner barrel. Remember I have the wire mesh in there to hold it in, but sometimes that falls out. 
like it did this time. There's the char. Whew. You can see it's it's done all through, but there's a part that isn't done. See that brown part? Sometimes the, the stuff at the very core doesn't get enough baking. Here's our piece of uh, cedar fence post, and you can see it didn't go all the way. Most of it's good char. And, and what didn't get charred all the way, I just threw it in there. And it goes again next time. Here's another experiment. This is a, a piece of a Douglas fir sapling, but it got charred all the way through. That's good. A couple of pieces that didn't get all the way through. It's a piece of hardwood from a pallet. As soon as this is exposed to air, it's going to want to ignite. So you have to quench it, otherwise it'll burst into flame. And, you, and then I'll create ash, and you don't want the ash. Same thing with the stuff in here. There's a pretty big hunk. And that's almost all the way done. You can see in the core it's a little brown. So that'll just get that next time. All the small stuff I guarantee is done. You know, all this little stuff. See, that's not. Like I say, sometimes the stuff at the very core doesn't, doesn't get baked. So you want to break this up into uh, about pea size or smaller and I don't do it with hand. You may find a better way to do it, but I'll, what I do is chop it with a shovel. You chop it up and this is what you get at the end. Finely chopped up char, which is mixed with urine and water and compost or compost tea. What you're looking for in the compost is not only the nutrients, but the microbes. This stuff is uh, extremely porous. This hunk right here has one acre of surface area in it. And that uh, creates a lot of space to hold moisture, to hold nutrients, and to hold microbes. And that will stay in the ground for a thousand years, removing the carbon from the carbon cycle increasing the uh, fertility and production of, of your garden soil.